The concept of implementation as implication we've been using works only when all the high-level specifications variables appear in the low-level spec. This lecture explains what implementation means when that isn't the case. It provides important insight into implementation, including what it means for a program to implement a TLA plus spec. But that comes in the second part. In this part, we discuss recursion and substitution, and then introduce our motivating example, another version of the alternating bit protocol. Suppose we need to define an operator remove x that removes all instances of the string x from a sequence of strings. For example, applying remove x to the sequence consisting of the five strings Tom, x, Dick, Harry, and x yields the value obtained by removing the two x's to obtain the string Tom, Dick, Harry. We do this with a recursive definition. A recursive definition defines remove x of a sequence in terms of remove x of a shorter sequence. This means that remove x of this shorter sequence is defined to equal some expression involving remove x of a still shorter sequence. We can keep going like this, obtaining expressions containing remove x applied to shorter and shorter sequences. Eventually, we reach an expression containing remove x of the empty sequence, which of course equals the empty sequence. So we have to do two things. Define remove x of the empty sequence and define the value of remove x of a non-empty sequence in terms of remove x of a shorter sequence. Remove x of a sequence beginning with x equals remove x applied to the rest of the sequence and remove x of a sequence beginning with another value, such as Tom, equals the sequence that begins with Tom and is followed by the result of applying remove x to the rest of the sequence. So we just have to write this as a single TLA plus definition. Here's the definition. If seek is the empty sequence, then remove x of seek equals the empty sequence. Otherwise, if the head of seek, its first element, equals the string x, then remove x of seek equals remove x of the tail of seek. Else, it equals the sequence obtained by prepending the head of seek to the front of remove x of the tail of seek. This is a recursive definition because the symbol we're defining appears in its definition. Such a definition must be preceded by a recursive declaration of the symbol being defined, with its arguments indicated by underscore characters. This is the complete definition of remove x. If you've used a functional programming language, recursive definitions will seem natural. If not, think of using a recursive definition when implementing the operator with a program requires a loop. Substitution is a fundamental operation of mathematics, but mathematicians have no standard notation for expressing it. In this lecture, I will write the expression obtained by substituting an expression E for the symbol V in an expression F like this, which I'll read as F with E substituted for V. For example, Y cubed minus Y with x plus 2 substituted for y equals the expression x plus 2 cubed minus the expression x plus 2. This is not TLA plus notation. I'm using it only for this lecture. There's a fundamental law of substitution in ordinary math. It says that for any variable v and expressions e and f, v equals e implies that f equals the expression f with e substituted for v. Let's write it as this theorem. I'll call this law the simple substitution law, though it's not what mathematicians call it. Ordinary math corresponds to the constant expressions of TLA+. 
Mathematicians' variables are the declared constants of TLA+. Nothing in ordinary math corresponds to the declared variables and non-constant operators of TLA+. They belong to temporal logic, a special kind of math that's not as simple as ordinary math. And TLA stands for the temporal logic of actions. The simple substitution law is not true if V is a variable or E is a non-constant expression. Here's an example that shows it's not true. Let's substitute y for v, x plus 2 for e, and y prime for f in the law, where x and y are variables. The law states that v equals e, which is y equals x plus 2, implies that f, which is y prime, equals the expression f with x plus 2 substituted for y, which is x plus 2 prime. This formula is an assertion about a behavior, and the theorem asserts that it's true for all behaviors. This is a state formula, so it asserts that y equals x plus 2 is true in the first state of the behavior. This action formula asserts that the value of y in the second state of the behavior equals the value of x plus 2 in that second state. In other words, that y equals x plus 2 is true in the second state of the behavior. So this formula asserts that y equals x plus 2 true in the first state implies that it's also true in the second state, which is not true for all behaviors. The law is not true if v is a variable or e is a non-constant expression. To obtain the substitution law for temporal logic, which I will call the temporal substitution law, we change the simple substitution law by adding this always operator. The statement of the theorem is parsed like this. So the law now asserts that for every behavior, if v equals e is true in all states of the behavior, then the formula f equals f with e substituted for v is true on the behavior. Let's look at the same example as before, with y substituted for v, x plus 2 substituted for e, and y prime substituted for f, where x and y are variables. The law now asserts that if y equals x plus 2 in all states of the behavior, then y equals x plus 2 in the second state of the behavior, which is obviously true of all behaviors. This law is true when v is a declared variable and e is a state expression. The law is also true when v is a declared constant and e is a constant expression, in which case the values of v and e don't depend on the state. And therefore, in any behavior, v equals e is true in the initial state if and only if it's true in all states of the behavior. So the temporal substitution law becomes the ordinary substitution law. There's a straightforward generalization of the temporal substitution law to substitution for two variables. The meaning of this with expression should be obvious, except perhaps for the fact that the substitutions for v1 and v2 have to be done simultaneously, not one after the other. This makes a difference if v2 appears in expression e1. And this obviously generalizes to substitution for any number of variables. It's this general version that I refer to as the temporal substitution law. We now come to the motivating example of this lecture, the AB2 protocol. The AB2 protocol is the same as the alternating bit protocol of lecture 9, except for one simple modification messages are detectably corrupted rather than lost. A corrupted message is represented by a special value bad that doesn't equal any message that can be sent. The specification is in module AB2, which you can now download. Module AB2 is obtained by making simple modifications to module AB. 
It starts like AB by extending the integers and sequences modules and declaring the constant data, the set of possible data values that can be sent. It also declares the constant bad and adds the assumption that bad is not an element of the set of possible messages that can be sent, which equals the set of possible messages that can be sent from A to B, union with the set of possible messages that can be sent from B to A, which contains the two values 0 and 1. The variables a var and b var are the same as in module a b, but the message sequences a to b and b to a are renamed a to b2 and b to a2. vars is again defined to be the tuple of all variables. Here's the definition of type OK from a b. The type assertions for a var and b var are the same as in a b. In module a b, the variable a to b equals a sequence of data bit pairs, while the elements of the sequence a to b2 are either data bit pairs or else equal to bad. Stop the video and make sure you understand this formula. Similarly, where b to a of module a b is a sequence of zeros or ones, b to a2 is a sequence of the values 0, 1, or bad. The initial state formula and the actions in which a and b send messages are the same except for renaming the variables a to b and b to a. Here's the initial state formula, a's send message action, and b's send message action. The receive actions of a and b must ignore corrupted messages which equal bad. A's receive action is the same as before, except for the change of variables. That's because if the message being received, which is at the head of the sequence of messages sent by B, equals bad, then our assumption means that bad doesn't equal 0 or 1. But A var of 2 does equal either 0 or 1. So the if condition is false, and the action leaves a var unchanged, meaning that a ignores the message. To ignore corrupted messages, b receive must be modified beyond just renaming the variables a to b and b to a. Here's the new definition. In the if formula, this conjunct has been added to the test. So b var is left unchanged, and the message being received is ignored if it equals bad. Finally, the lose message action is replaced by a corrupt message action, which changes messages in A to B2 and B to A2 to bad instead of removing them. Here is the definition, which is the same as the lose message action, except for these parts that describe the change to A to B2 or B to A2. The definitions of next and of the safety specification spec are what you should expect. I'll discuss liveness later. The AB2 protocol is essentially the same as the ordinary alternating bit protocol of module AB. As we expect, it too implements the high level safety specification of the protocol in module AB spec. This is expressed in module AB2 the same as in module AB, by importing module AB spec with renaming and stating this theorem. You should now check that the AB2 protocol implements the high level safety spec of module AB spec. As with the AB spec, a model must provide two things. First, it has to provide a value for the constant data. For example, you can use this set of three model values. Second, it must provide a state constraint to bound the lengths of the sequences A to B2 and B to A2. You can constrain them both to have length less than four. A model of specification AB2 must also specify a value for the constant bed. That value must satisfy the module's assumption, 
when data also equals the value the model assigns to it. An obvious choice is to let the model assign the string quote bed to the constant bed. But running the model produces this TLC error, attempted to check equality of integer zero with non-integer quote bed. What TLC really means is that it tried to check if zero equals the value quote bed, and it doesn't even know whether or not that value is an integer. We naturally think that quote bed and zero are different, but the semantics of TLA plus doesn't specify that they're different. So TLC doesn't know whether or not they're equal. What value of bed does satisfy this condition? We don't know, and we don't need to know. To define the model, all we need to know is what value does TLC think satisfies the condition? And the answer to that question is a model value. TLC assumes a model value does not equal any value that you might expect it to be different from. You don't need to know precisely what that means. It's convenient to have the model assigned to the constant bed, the model value of the same name. To do that, in the window for assigning a value to the constant, just select the model value option. You can now run TLC to check that the AB2 specification implements the specification of module AB spec. Module AB2 next defines fair spec to be the obvious analog of formula fair spec of module AB. But this specification fair spec doesn't implement the high-level specification fair spec of module AB spec. I believe that fairness requirements on subactions of next cannot guarantee that any messages are received before they're corrupted. To guarantee that, we change the safety spec. We let sending a message add something to the state that determines if the message can be corrupted. We could add a component to each message. For example, we could let a component with value true mean that the message cannot be corrupted, and let a component with value false mean that the message can be corrupted. It's an imaginary component that's not meant to be implemented and serves only to specify liveness. It's best to keep the real and imaginary parts of the state separate by putting them in different variables. Instead of adding an imaginary component to the messages in A to B2, we have the same messages in A to B2 and put the sequence of their imaginary components into a separate variable A to B good. And we similarly have B to A2 and the imaginary variable B to A good. The resulting specification spec P is defined in a module named AB2P which extends module AB2. The variables A to B good and B to A good are imaginary variables. They're not meant to be implemented. They are used only for defining the fairness requirements. Deciding in advance if a message can be deleted doesn't change the values that the variables of AB2 can assume. So if we ignore the values of the imaginary variables A to B good and B to A good, then specification spec and spec P allow the same behaviors. You can read the definitions of spec P and of the specification fair spec P with fairness requirements in module AB2P. Stop the video and download that module now. Our discussion of liveness of the AB2 protocol stops here. The second part of this lecture considers only the protocol's safety spec, explaining the precise sense in which it implements the safety spec of the AB protocol and how to check that it does. Imaginary variables will appear again.